what have I got myself into? What have I got myself into? There was one time last night I woke up and I heard a noise and I looked up and I looked around and I'm like, where the heck am I at? I couldn't figure out where I was at. Have y'all ever done that? You don't think about it, but that sucker right there, that's gonna be the last hot shower for a long time. Five days. Now I'm going to, I'm going to clean up. It's going to be cold, but having a hot shower, you don't think about it, but that's going to be pretty tough. Well, luck of there. Right on cue, right on cue. Yeah, you know you're up north when you see salt all over the vehicles, everywhere, which is the case right here. The man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Joe Holly. I'll what is going salt. on? What's up, buddy? I am so excited about this. I think my fans are as, just as excited as I am about it. I've been telling them I'm going on a five-day tenting, ice fishing adventure. We get ready to go in the outback. Come oh, yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be your last shower for a couple days. Yeah, I think so. I, I might do the ice bath challenge, you know. Yeah. Like everybody's doing, we might jump in. We might jump in the ice. Come on, Joe. Come on, we. Uh, come on, Joe. Come we, we might jump in the ice. All right, so here's what I understand. We got an hour and a half driving on asphalt. We got hour and a half of two hours of driving on logging roads and then my man has two snowmobiles set up that we're driving 30 more minutes in the outback of maine to get where we're going it's all true hey this is, there, a, this is a journey hey there better be some fish there is all i'm there telling you there might be some fish i can't uh, promise you that yeah the legend he's he's playing he's playing nice right now you know that he's gonna have the fish fish there all right come along guys guys i got him i got him can you believe it <laughs> it's finally happening this trip's been in the works for 18 years well maybe 18 in one month i think <laughs> when we started talking about it i'm i'm jack i don't know about joe but i've been posting this all over social media normally i don't post a lot about extra adventures i do but when you get a chance to go with the legend in Maine, I think he's the governor. He might become the president. I don't know what he's going to do, but I knew if I was ever going to go ice fishing, I said, if I'm ever going to do it, and I've said I'm not going to do it, but watching Joe's videos gets me excited about fishing on the ice, which sounds weird. I said I'd never do it. I said, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it with the man Joe. So he is breaking me. He, I am a virgin right now in the ice fishing world and Joe gets to, you know, experience the, the outcoming of the virgin of ice fishing. What do you think about that, Joe? <laughs> well, that's your intro, guys. But we are going to have some fun. Anytime me and Joe got together when he was on tour, we always laughed. We always had a great time and I know it's going to be about the same now yeah. i'm sure there's going to be some mess ups with me on the ice i no. guarantee you no. i'm going to do something crazy and that's stupid but uh hey my challenge is for this for this for this uh, uh series of show is to get joe to jump in <laughs> to the cold water if we can find water somewhere the ice bath challenge yes you guys comment below who wants to see the legend of maine jump in i ain't gonna say naked but jump <laughs> in the ice up here in maine who wants to see comment below because the pressure is on you joe the pressure <laughs> well, are, is you on gonna, you. are you gonna do it oh I, I i'll do it i'll do it i know you'll do it I, I, here's the thing i brought an ice saw too so we can cut a nice big hole 
<laughs> oh, now you got me a little nervous. He he's actually got the tools to make it happen. I always got the tools. <laughs> all right, you just got to tie a rope to me. Is all I got to tell you. You got to tie a rope to me because if I jump down, I I don't want to be going down forever. So, ice bath challenge. Yeah, we are about to start the season in two weeks, and I don't have anything ready. I've been focused about this ice fishing i think i've prepped my mind more about this trip with joe holland than i have prepping my mind for the bass pro tour of mlf oh no so uh -huh. if he has a bad season guys you know whose fault it is <laughs> but stay tuned to this series i think you're really gonna appreciate it we had a blast on tour together david took me under his wing right away you know here's here's a uh, true champion in all the regards at the very top of the game and i'm coming in as a rookie you know uh wet behind the neck and green behind the ears as they say in some places and took me right in you know no big timing or anything like that so so i really appreciate everything he's done for me and he said he had an inkling to go ice fishing i said well i can i can make that happen for you so stay tuned to this series guys because there's going to be a lot of stories a lot of inside stories that you might not hear in the papers you might not hear them on tv and uh i'm sure we'll we'll have some really fun a lot of fun times thanks for tuning in so far we'll see you when we get up north we roughing it a little bit but we are like getting a little bit of good stuff don't tell nobody this is this isn't for us this is for brandon that's for our buddies that we're gonna meet in the outback. The old, the, the avocado challenge. How do you get a one day avocado, a two day avocado, a today avocado? Joe, where did they come from? I didn't put <laughs> I already got two boxes in my truck. <laughs> where did they come no. from, Joe? Oh my gosh. No. I'm diabetic and he's he's like slipping in some uh, cookies and sugar <laughs> in for me. Joe! Oh, did, shame on you. Do we have, do, are you like medicated? Do we need? Oh yeah, I got my medication. Okay. I just might have to double up on it in that day. It doesn't freeze, does it? Uh-huh. Yeah, no, it don't freeze. So, I we are, we are roughing it a little bit. We're going to rough it a little bit, but not quite. But we gotta... Here we are at the last stop before we hit the Outback. And you guys saw me in the beginning of the show and told you I said I ordered some FXR. I want people who know what it's like to live in the Outback and keep you warm and look a here. What'd you look a here? FXR, FXR, FXR. Yeah, I have a good inkling and I'm not gonna go cold in this uh, adventure. But looking at these rods, come on now. Look at that, ice fishing rods. I don't know if I'm gonna be used to the, this kind of little micro fishing stuff, but. All right, we are off the asphalt, been riding in the truck for an hour and a half, and now we're on what they call a logging road. Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. So this is, what mountain is this? That's Katahdin. All right, so this is a mountain, Katahdin in Maine. It's the largest uh, mountain in Maine. Check it out yes that's just gorgeous right there now you can't quite see the top of it because of the you can only see yeah, about half right now you can only see about half but this is what we're calling logging roads we're just like literally driving for hours on this and then we get to go on snowmobiles deeper into the outback outback of maine my man is hooking me up with an adventure of a lifetime so Hey, make sure you check his channel out, Joe Holland Fishing. So we're at the end of the Appalachian Trail. This is like legit, when you are done doing the Appalachian Trail, this is where you end up at. I can't believe probably how many people have raised their hands up yeah. with an accomplishment that is like, that's something to be proud of. I know a lot of people that do the Appalachian Trail, do a lot of hiking. But 
that would be pretty cool. Is it? Is it actually right here? Yep, it's yep. right here. This is the west branch of the Penobscot River. Where so we're gonna belong. be ice fishing. We're gonna be like Jesus on water, walking we're on water. That we're past that mountain. Okay, that's we're where past we're going. that and mountain. Katahdin, if you look at Katahdin back. is right there. Yes. I thought you said, Joe, I thought you said there was ice out here. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're light. <laughs> Joe. There come, ain't much. Come on. I mean, I can stand at the bank and throw out on the bank. This is supposed to be ice fishing. Yeah, it's pretty rough. I'm not going to lie. It's a bit of a tough year for ice. We're going to have to pray hard that Jesus will make us walk on water. Bring your own Bring your own ice. Say, oh, look. We got deer. We got deer. Is it moose? Deer. That's a rare sight up here in northern Maine. Well, here. is it moose or white tail? It it's it's white tail. Oh, look at them nanny goats. Would you look at there? Would you look at there? Would you look at there? Oh yeah. That one might have a downspout. A downspout. I thought we were going to be looking at darn mooses. <laughs> Joe over there talking deer, white tail deer language. <laughs> he talking, he talking language. They, so they yard here. I don't know if you guys have that where you live, but they they leave their territory where they spend their whole year, and they go to what we have called wintering yards, where it's like all spruce, cedar, fir trees. They get a huge canopy, so there's less snow underneath, and it gives them something to eat. Otherwise, the snow gets four, five, six, seven foot deep. And they, they can't survive in the winter unless they're in a wintering yard. So at this time of year, the deer all get together. They hate each other's guts. All the big bucks, you know, during the rut, before the rut, pre-rut. But now they're like best friends. Those two little guys there are best friends now to try to make it through the winter. And as long as the coyotes don't get in the deer yards or the loggers cutting down the trees, those deer will make it survive the worst of winters, you know, staying in a yard. So really cool. There's a lynx right there a lynx you know how rare that is to see a lynx a lynx right there there's two of them look at him looking at us that is so freaking cool he's gonna let us get right up to him oh that's cool speed up see if you can get him i see them i see the foot traps well, I see where they went, but that is so cool. That's my first lynx I've ever seen in my life. And oh, look, there he is! Hey, buddy! Oh my gosh! Look at that! He's 10 feet from us and don't care. That crazy possible. Isn't that so cool? How's that, baby? Oh my gosh! That is like the coolest thing ever. Look, there's the other one. Oh, look at that. Did you get a good picture of it? Hey, 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 right there. So, so for the viewers at home, what was, I want to just ask you, what was I just telling you? Literally 10 seconds before that happened. Okay, so you see this curve in the road, right around that curve. He was telling me about a lynx that he trapped years ago, and, it, and you wasn't allowed to trap lynx because they are a protected animal. And sure enough, as soon as we turned that curve, he goes, look, there's two links in the road, like 10 seconds down the road. And what's cool about it is this. The story that he was telling was him letting the links go. And that could have been generational yeah. uh, links from 
My man Joe Holland. <laughs> could be the grandkids. That is so cool. So that's a federally threatened species. They primarily only feed on snowshoe hare. And snowshoe hare have like 10 year cycles, so they go up and down. So it's pretty low year on rabbit right now, so they could be having a hard time. But the cool yeah. thing to see, like one really cool thing about a, Look. a lynx is, so like a, an adult lynx foot will be over six inches. So those were, those were both kittens, but that's uh. still like four and a half inches. And they have fur in them and their pads are wide so they could be on top of the lightest like see that those are all rabbit tracks oh, see those rabbit yeah. tracks so they either just killed that joker or they're hunting them uh -huh. and like look at all the rabbit tracks oh right they there. right there around the wathkily wabbit yeah. but those are link tracks there lynx tracks there those are nice ones and then and the difference like the biggest easiest way to tell them apart is from a bobcat is they have longer ear tufts like a lot longer and their tail looks like you dipped them in a bucket of paint black paint whereas a bobcat's is black on the top but it's got white on the bottom whereas a lynx is black and tight just like you dipped it so those were like super I, I, I was i thought the same thing <laughs> I, I just i didn't but yeah, know so there were three that. here because look there's a set of tracks there there and we had one over there so there were a minimum of three here and they're all over this rabbit in here and all because my man turned loose the lynx from years ago from him trapping my first lynx ever i caught right that's there. so cool it's like whatever 10 seconds up the road he was telling me that story we turn around it just shows follow the rules guys follow the rules and you'll have sites like this all right so here's a logging truck that these logging roads are made for and he's coming out with a huge load Not as huge as Joe was telling me. Joe, was that was that a huge truck or no? That that one was road legal, so he can go down the road with that. But okay. most of them, a lot of them are oversized. They're, they're like 14 or 16 foot wide and 110 foot long, so they're not legal to go on tar roads. 110 foot long going down a road. So and they'll do triples of those. They'll haul three trailers on one on one uh, caboose. Ah, uh, caboose. <laughs> so he's been telling me about these logging roads with logging trucks and how many times uh, he's experienced some scary situations so you always want to give them the most footage on the road that you can give them is what he's telling me yeah. they drive like animals they don't slow down for nothing <laughs> all right david and i are gonna go get a piece of chaga i just bought it off the telos road oh that's pretty deep i'm gonna let him <laughs> I'm gonna let him break trail on this. I don't have my clothes on yet. Here, but I spied a piece of chaga. I want to be quick just in case a log truck comes. But yeah, nice piece of chaga right there. Reachable. I didn't. All my axes are back home in the tent or in the snowmobile. But this is a piece of chaga right here. This has the most antioxidants of anything on the planet right there. It's a mushroom, and it's. It's like a parasite to the tree. You know, it lives off the tree and it gets sucked up through the sap root and, and it'll protrude wherever the weakest spot on the tree is and eventually it'll kill that tree. So that's it right there. So, what, you tell, so from what I understand, this is the highest antioxidants in the world. In the world. And what did you say about diabetes? It's been known to either stop diabetes. I don't want to say cure it but I've read that. Okay, so you guys know I'm a diabetic. He spotted this fungus going 30 miles an hour down the road. He hits the brake. I said, what are you doing? He spots a piece of fungus with snow on it on the side of the road. And yes, we're getting, as soon as he told me the history behind this with diabetes, I said, we got to go back and get it. So look at that thing. Look at that. So I'm gonna bite. try to knock that off the tree with just a hammer. And I got a claw hammer too. There we go. Oh, watch your head. I should have an ax for this, but. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I thought it was coming in. Even if we get a piece of it, we don't oh, need that. I am so gonna eat this. We're Here gonna we go. drink it this I week. mean, drink yep. it. I need my ax, but we'll get it. There we go. That was a piece. Yep. And then the Native Americans used it, but they also use the black is highly flammable. Ooh, so they yeah. used to shave so, the. So to, we're 
about to drink something that is highly flammable? Yep. Come on. Yeah, that's what they that use for, just, for fire starters. That just don't make much sense. There it is. Oh. And we'll chop that up. We'll chop that up and drink it. <laughs> but Chopping up highly flammable fungus to cure diabetes. I don't know about that. <laughs> he wasn't expecting this on this trip. So that chunk right there, all we're going to need is a golf ball off that for this entire trip. The golf ball lasts me a month, so I'll send the rest of that home with David, and he's got a year so far. Uh, now, good my thing. Buddy, <laughs> oh, my buddy grinds it up into a powder uh -huh. and runs it in his Keurig machine. Drinks it every day. Chaga. So it'll, put, it'll put hair on your chest, if nothing else. <laughs> or on your face. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I got this. <laughs> guys, all right, guys, we made it. We made it up here. We're in the Chamberlain parking lot. We're all loaded up. Got the Mr. David Dudley here. He's going on his first snowmobile ride ever, and look what he's on, guys. He's on the old slush magnet. Three. All I hear is this is just like the man Joe, the legend. This slush magnet is a legend, and I get my maiden voyage on the legend. I'm looking forward to that. I got my maiden voyage on it, too, a couple years ago. <laughs> She's 370, all sorts of kitty cat power. Long track. Mm -hmm. So we got some serious slush to contend with on a on a serious note. So I told him just punch it going into it. If you don't make it, we'll tell him. That's right. I hope you got a tow rope. We do. Right. But I think you'll make it. Just feed her the corn before you get there. Oh, yeah. And then don't let off on her. Feed her the corn. <laughs> gotcha. yeah. So we're going to head out now. We got like a probably a 20 minute snowmobile ride to get to camp. And then we're going to unload the sled, get him all set up in the camp. And then we might go out and maybe do a little fishing today. Maybe eat some fish. What do you think, bud? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That Made was it. awesome. <laughs> the view out here is just like breathtaking. Oh, my God. You wait till the sunrise and sunset. It's, oh, my gosh. It's the best I've ever seen in my life. All Didn't right. Die. First snowmobile How'd you ride? trip, rode like a Cadillac, <laughs> a Cadillac. Nice, no, <laughs> no trouble in that slush. And there's gonna be fish out in that field right oh, there? Oh yeah. It's just a field, right? Yeah, it's just a field. It's just yeah. a field. Yeah. I'm so used to looking at, uh, you know, like fields of grass. Yeah. I'm not used to looking at this and saying, hey, there's fish right below there. Yep, about, we'll catch the brook trout about 50 feet away, but. How where my buddies are is good lake trout and white fish. That's up. blowing my mind. Blowing my mind. All right, I'm ready. Let's go. Uh -huh. All right, this is home sweet home. I'll show you. I'll show you your accommodations for the next week. Yeah. Hopefully they're up to your standards. Oh, whip. <laughs> we call this the Taj Mahal, or maybe the Taj Mahal. Y you could go yellow wherever you want, as you can see but do brown at the end of those footballs, oh, at, at the end of those is, foot tracks. Is that, is that the road to the number two area? Yeah, there's some raisins over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's home sweet home. <laughs> Hardwood floor. We nice have... and warm in here. We got, we got uh, chandelier lights up in here. Yep. That's your bed right here. All right. You've got a new pillow, new pillowcase. Oh, Actually, you've got a new sleeping bag too, to be honest with you. Yay. Got a new pillar. We've got all kinds of stuff up in here. Insulated. Yeah. That's cool. Insulated. we got a buddy heater. And then here's the kitchen. You're standing in the kitchen. The kitchen. Yeah, and then this is all the supplies for the week. A little bit overkill on that, but better to have it and not All need right. it than need it and not have it. There you go. I'm excited. All right, guys, as promised, we're back out here. Now, this is episode two. So if you have not watched episode one, the travel vlog, that was a very fun video. So this is going to be the second video. And yes, I have never, ever, ever caught a fish under ice. I've never fished under the ice. Well, that's kind of dumb saying that i've never ice fished before let's just say it that way so what we are doing we are back out here on a secret lake that we're not going to tell you the name of and joe is using of course forward looking imaging to sit there and go around 
and look for the fish yes even under the ice we're using forward looking imaging so right now what we're doing we're drilling random holes going around looking seeing what we can find and then we're gonna start fishing so i'm excited i can't wait to see what my first fish is what, what's my first fish gonna be joe either a white fish or a toad a white fish or a toad and i don't even know what he's talking about <laughs> so yeah my first fish is gonna be a white fish or a toad guys it is beautiful out here i mean nobody nobody is around nobody and we got the lake all to ourselves looking at the beautiful mountains put that on it well i was gonna cut his head off or there's two of them looking at got him yes got him all right buddy got him oh this had, might be a laker he had some competition that's a good fish in. this might be my first fish joe how's your drag this could be my first fish joe oh it's a what we it's got a, it's a sucker i got a sucker for a sucker catching a i don't sucker. think I've, I've only seen that once a sucker catching a sucker that's crazy uh-huh brandon's gonna use that bait right there for a for a, this is bait for a giant lake trout oh that's what we talking about yeah, oh. hold them up would you look at there Mwah. big size <laughs> oh, i don't know if i do that would could, you look at there <laughs> i could definitely see the resemblance here hold that baby up <laughs> would you look at would you look at there would you look at there pretty good size sucker Mwah. and there was two suckers oh <laughs> Almost a catch release. Almost catch and release. Yeah, we'll give that to Brandon for bait. Okay. He'd love that. All right. Oop. He better catch a giant. That's. A, I think that's the only thing you'll catch on that. But w I reckon th what I was getting at now that we have forward-facing sonar, mm -hmm. what I was doing was confirming what he was doing right. was he's just saying, hey, I'm over here, and they don't care. They would come to him. Yeah. And that's now that I've seen forward facing sonar. So they're a hundred foot. They don't know really, I mean, they might know my presence, but as soon as I turn the boat and start V-lining right to them, I mean, the whole school's like, hey, let's go check this out. And they come straight wow. to the boat. I got my little tiny bait on. Little oh, whitey, little whitey. Oh. Little white fish. These things are great. Look. Oh. Ooh. They're pretty, but I don't know if this one. They smell like cucumbers. I don't know if you can smell it on this one or not. They might not be big enough to smell. No. Little white fish. Yeah, I got to catch something. Look at that little tiny lure. Wonder bread. The other white fish. He cut. Oh, I think he bumped me. Yeah, he's interested in you. He's all over me. Yes. Got him here. Yeah. Here, get this no, guy. No, you got it. Dude, these things fight hard for as small as they are. Yeah, he come in there like he the man. I might lose him. I'm going to horse him. Where do I do? Nothing. I'm just going to horse him. A little better. Jeez, that's almost a keeper. Dude. They, they, they flip out like a tuna. Oh, the hook already popped out? Yeah. Got into you? Sweet, caught two on one. He would keep if we wanted him, but we got enough fish to eat. And he's not hooked deep, so white fish are kind of fragile. We'll show him to the camera real quick. You can, we want to fish that one, that little? Uh-uh, no, I'm... Nice lake white fish, guys. 16 incher, that's a keeper. Got him on a little Wonder Bread Castmaster Function. Wonder Bread. Yep. That is a perfect name for that. Right? Isn't, isn't, that, it? isn't that awesome? Yeah. That is, that could not be any more perfect than that.
And that is a wrap for fishing. My first experience ice fishing, I'm telling you, that is the way to go. I might actually, Joe, consider moving to Maine in the winter, and I never thought I'd say that, but listening to the peace and quiet, having the lake all to basically all to ourselves in nature, don't get no better than that. That's the truth. So you're saving the skin off all those fish. Yeah. I'm gonna set this hook right here, okay? Oh, look at that pink meat. Oh, we might have to eat that sushi style. Mm -hmm. So we're saving that? Yeah. Sweet, you save the fins too? Uh, no, we'll trim that off, but we'll make like little chips out of it. Sweet. We won't have many, but. It's all right. We might tomorrow. Yep, true that. Bright orange meat on that lake trout. I mean that brook trout. He had a full belly. I'm curious what he was eating. Oh, look at that big chunk of boneless brook trout. That was a good sized fish. Then, beautiful. So with these, we just where the guts go. I want to see those guts. We're gonna cut these up like potato chips, and you score them really. I don't like is that much meat on them, but try to get them clean, super clean. Yeah, a little bit better than that, but. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Put them in there. And throw them in the pan? Yep. Or oil? In oil. Yeah. But and you can use starch. Starch gets them crispier. Oh, you know, really? Starch in like cornstarch or yep. something? Yeah, cornstarch. That's what, well, that's what cornstarch does. So look at all those little potato chips right there. Mm -hmm. Or skin chips. What they do, they do it with salmon. They do it with salmon. Don't do the cusk. Oh, the, is that what that is? No, no. I don't know. That's a trout. Oh yeah, that's still a trout. Yeah. You don't want to do the cusk though. Because the cusk has got like dirt that comes off the skin like way after it's dead. What? All right, we got all the hooks out. We're gonna, guys, we're gonna feed these to the fox. We got a local fox that's uh, been kind of poking around camp. We see the tracks in the snow. He got pretty close to it, so he's hungry. So why not? We're gonna give him the remains. But there were some hooks in those fish. We made sure we got the hooks out first because that's an awful thing to do to anything. So. We got us some skin, skin chips. Dudley's showing me how they do it when they cut fish all the time. I've never had skin chips. I've eaten skin on trout and smelt before. Just cooking them all kind of whole, just gutted. But this is pretty exciting to have skin chips. Get all nice and crispy and here we go. Got us a little, there we go. Looking, <laughs> good. Looking good, buddy. I'm getting hungry already. I know it. So we got cusk. Brook trout, white fish. We're gonna let you guys know which are the best. Those are great fillets for brook trout. Chips, and then this is just junk, I think, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll put that in the junk pile. Pretty darn good. Who's got a funny game warden story? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I got, we all got them. Funny which I, way? I love huh? listening to game <laughs> wardens. I got a bunch. They're brilliant. Because obviously if you put bait out, you got bait coming right oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Now you in North Carolina, it? you can bait. And yeah, all yeah. they do is go to, all, all they do is run every camera in the morning and figure out which one they want Just to like turn Maine, on. that's what yeah, they yeah. do. Fresh, yeah. fresh, these tactic cams and stuff have changed it all. I mean, like, them guides wake up in the morning and say, oh, geez, we got a nice boar at, you know, four yep. o'clock this morning, game on. Yep, yep. Saves a lot of gas and running around, though, and you mm. know what I mean? You don't have to tend you, like, we run some baits for our buddy out, buddies out in Ohio that come hunt with us, whatever, and if that bait ain't, you might be on a four, three or four day rotation, but if it ain't been hit, and you ain't got no pitches, there ain't no need to waste your gas nope, to go do nope. it, you know. I'll tell you who put me in my place about baiting. Now this is 10 years ago. I was like, eh, baiting, that's really not hunting, blah, 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 blah. Ted Nugent, 
Ted Nugent. He smoked my butt. Mm -hmm. Everybody who watched the show's butt. Ted's there. He's got his big box hands. He's he's going throwing the corn out like. And it looks like the yellow brick road mounted mm -hmm. up the corn. Perfect. Ted Nugent looks at the at the, the at the camera and goes, "I know what all of y'all are thinking, including me. You think this is not bait? He are that you think it's wrong, not bait? He said, "I ain't got but one thing to say to y'all." He said, "If any of y'all have ever put a worm or a minnow on your hook, you ain't got room to talk." And I went. Hmm. Smoke me. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, all right, let's hold over bait then. Yeah. It really did change yeah. my mind when he said it that way. And I'll throw bait where I want to throw bait at. And he said, all oh, you guys that hunt over white oak trees and when the acorns are dropping and all that food is below the ground and you're setting your stand up on that, you ain't got room to... I mean, he was mm -hmm. going off and I was like, just... Oh, yeah. That's, okay. All right, let's bait. Throw me some corn down. I'll hunt over it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's well, the you get way more ethical shots. Everything. Like yeah, he put me in my place, but so now my you can't mean you uh, can't deer hunt over bait. Can you guys bait deer? No, not right? in Virginia. Because but you can of the dog. Blue you can dog hunt. Deer. Oh yeah, we dog. They dog hunt the dog. Oh, that'd be that's oh, where you wow. from. My re yeah. Our record is 63 deer by 3 o'clock in one day. Oh, let's go. 63. We had that's, 63 that's Washington on the County's ground. total last let's year. Let's do that. It was a peanut plantation right. damage permit. You know, it, it was all legal. It really was. It was all legal. We had 150, and the actual farmer came out there, and he said, if a deer runs by you, and you don't shoot, he don't says, you're, yeah, he said, you're never welcome that back. <laughs> you're never welcome back here again. I was. We were hunting one day. And uh, that it's like a little, it's basically an island, and they deer always get on it. And so we killed 31 one year and 31 another year. So we were going around picking up all the deer in the boat, and I look, and here comes two nanny goats swimming off. What do you mean said, nanny goats? Does. Oh, I call them <laughs> nanny goats. Two does come, <laughs> they were swimming off. I said, Jacob, I said, go on over there, do them. He pulls up there beside him, and as soon as he got close, I reached out. I said, Whoosh. He said, Dudley, do not put that deer in the boat. And I'm <laughs> holding the nanny like this. She's going, eh, eh. She's going like this, and the mama done turned. He's like, do not put that in the boat. Now, we're all laughing our butt off. So I just drop it back. Mama done turned in. So this one gets up, and it starts swimming back. Mama makes it to shore. We done stopped the boat. We're just giggling, watching. Mama gets up, shakes off, and... She goes, Ch -ch -ch -ch. <laughs> all right, guys. We have finally settled in. It's dark and it's supper time, and I'm excited to eat some of the world famous Joe Holland cooking. As you can see, we got a little propane grill, and he actually had a few fish that he caught yesterday that we're going to eat tonight. And we're actually going to make some skin chips that come off one of the trout. And of course, you gotta have the fart beans for sure. So let check this out. This is actually a tent, but it's actually insulated. As you can see, just highly insulated. It is freezing outside. I think it's like low teens right now, but it is freezing outside and we're comfortable in here. We got a $10 LED light strip that he picked up. Fabulous, works perfectly, lit us up. Got a 30 below, uh, 30 below sleeping bag uh, right here on a cot. We got our kitchen. I'm giving y'all like the DD crib, the <laughs> JH cribs here. So we got the gourmet kitchen. We got the gourmet chef. We got a closet over here. We got our storage unit, like our garage right here. We got a propane here. We got strobe lights for when we want to dance at night. <laughs> you know, he's got the strobe lights set up. We got, of course, my bag right here. Joe's going to be sleeping here. My secret mix. I like a secret mix. All right, we got Dudley's secret mix. He said something about black and Old Bay. I know in Maine we never even heard of Old Bay. I would have never heard about it. Too. Other than I went to this crab shack, uh, to the right's off. You want it off or? Yeah, that's off. My secret mix. This right here 
Joe, I'd have to hurt you. I mean, I, it, don't ask me what's in I here. I won't even ask. Don't don't ask. I'd have to hurt you. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's when smelling you, good. I know that. Mm. That's quite a mix in the pan. We got cusk, we got white fish, and we got some, some brook trout in there. Mm. Getting a nice, good sear on them in the pan. This would be my first time eating, what is it called? Cusk. C-U-S-K. Look at that. What'd you look of there? What'd you look of there, Joe? Just looking at it. What'd you look of there? Yes, sir. That, that's definitely a piece of cusk. That's good. We getting ready to eat what they call skin chips. So it's like potato chips, but it's the skin of whatever fish you... <coughs> Salmon chips are pretty common items. So basically, as you can tell, this is the skin off of the uh, trout that we caught. That was we're a band-aid. We're going to, <laughs> <laughs> we are going to season these up just like you would a potato chip. Put them in very hot oil, sear them, get them crispy, and you actually get a lot of flavor, of course, with the skin, so. And you scaled them too. Yep, scaled them, yep, scale them. So we're gonna dry them up a little bit. We don't, I don't like to put, you want, you don't want a lot of moisture going into oil when you throw them in there. You want them to be pretty dry. So all I'm doing right now is putting these out right now. I'm gonna dry them up and create our fish chips. Getting them dry. Now we're gonna season, season them up. And you wanna, you wanna go pretty heavy on the seasoning because when you put them in there, uh, a, more than half the seasoning will fa fall off and it doesn't take long to cook them. I like to use grapeseed oil Grapeseed oil is a higher temperature and it's a sweeter, uh, it's a sweeter oil. It's one of the highest temperatures you can cook, but you can use whatever oils you want. We got it at a high temperature for sure. <laughs> that thing cooks so hot, man. It does. You can go on the other side. It's a little easier to adjust on the other side. See how it does without cornstarch. Because I got that Louisiana seasoning that's probably mostly cornstarch. I probably didn't cook that one long enough. Oh wow. Shoot, that might be better than the fish. I know. It's good, ain't it? Guys, you have watched me sprint through airports, canceled flights, blah, 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 blah. I'm here. So tomorrow is actually going to be the first day that we go out fishing. I've already had a blast today riding the snowmobile everywhere around. So tomorrow and the next video that's dropping is going to be me actually trying to catch a fish underneath some ice in northern maine almost in canada so appreciate you guys appreciate the support of the channel go support joe holland's channel joe holland fishing go support his channel he's going to be posting also videos of this adventure that we're doing and he's always so fun to watch so guys appreciate you and i will be back at you with another video right now